Okay, so in this podcast, we're going to talk about uh, volume and temperature and their, their relationship. Now, in previous podcasts, we learned that pressure and volume are inversely proportional, that pressure and temperature are directly proportional. So the question becomes, are volume and temperature direct or inversely proportional? Meaning that if you increase the temperature, does the volume get bigger or does this volume get smaller? So uh, let's do exactly what this is telling us to do. And let's pump the handle. Let's put a certain amount of gas molecules in there. So we're going to um, do our best to try and hold things as constant as possible in the area of pressure. So let's see what our pressure gets up to, and then we'll figure out how we're going to manipulate it. Now, the problem with this relationship is it's very difficult to monitor. And the reason for it is in order to keep the pressure, um, I'm sorry, since we're adding energy or taking energy away from the molecules, that means they're either going to collide more with more energy or collide less with less energy with the walls of the container. So that means that temperature and pressure are really closely linked, but we need to hold pressure constant. So we got to keep the number of collisions equal at all times. So this is going to do the best that it can to try and keep that constant. So I've got the pressure in here right now. So I'm now going to try and lock that pressure down by holding pressure constant. So I just click the little button off screen that's now going to hold the pressure constant. So now we're going to try and manipulate our volume and our temperature and see what happens. So the easiest one to change is temperature. Obviously, I can either add heat or take heat away. So I can add energy or remove energy. So let's add some energy. Let's get that sucker hot. Let's get these molecules moving around and see what happens. Now notice that as soon as I start to raise the temperature, I gotta keep an eye on that little dude. Oh, check out the little dude. What's the little dude doing? He's backing up, why? Because he's got to manipulate the volume. So he's increasing our volume. And he's basically now walked off the screen trying to get our volume big enough. So I've increased the, pr the temperature. And by increasing the temperature, what happened? Our volume went up. Oh, that's interesting. So volume and temperature seem to be directly proportional. Well, the th other thing we want to do is we want to make sure we manipulate in the opposite direction. So if it goes up in one direction, let's see if it goes down in the same direction as well. So let's shrink our volume. And if we shrink our volume, oh, we're having a hard time keeping our pressure constant. OK, so that's not good. So we got to increase our volume back up, I'm trying to keep our pressure constant. So let's get that back at stabilized. Well. If we can't change the volume to lower the temperature, let's lower the temperature and see if it affects the volume. So let's add some cold. Okay, so let's take away heat by adding ice. Dropping our temperature way down. Our pressure's got to come back up. Got to get those number of collisions way up. So I've, cha I've made a considerable change to my temperature. Now look what the guy has to do. He's really got to shrink down those molecules. He's got to shrink down the size that those molecules can move around in. So... By shrinking them down, he's bringing that pressure back up, he's increasing the collisions, but we're not affecting the temperature. So notice that what happened when the volume went, when the temperature went up, our volume had to get bigger in order to equalize. When our temperature went down, our volume had to get smaller. So that means that the volume and temperature are directly proportional, meaning as one goes up, the other goes up. If one goes down, the other goes down. Now, let's reset this. And let's see if the same thing happens when we use light molecules, so molecules that are not that heavy. OK, let's see what our pressure comes up to be. OK, there we go. We got a pressure of 0.77, OK, about 80% of, of air pressure. And let's hold that pressure constant at this pressure. Now let's do the same thing, add some heat. These molecules are on fire. Ooh, the hot stuff. There we go. There's the, And check out what's happening to our dude. So our dude's got to back way up, increasing that volume, trying to get our pressure to come back down and to equalize it out with the temperature. So our temperature went way up. Our volume had to go way up. If I lower my temperature, let's see what happens to the volume. Going down, going down, going down. Oh, it's chilly. Almost frozen. Let it go, let it go. OK, so check out our volume. Lower the temperature, our volume comes down, back down. So again, it doesn't matter if our molecules are heavy or light. If our gas is heated, our volume expands. If our gas is cooled, our volume shrinks. You have seen this in your life. Remember when you were a kid and you went to like someone's birthday party and you had a helium balloon? The helium balloon was nice and floaty. 
the day that, of the party. That night, you brought it home. During the night, the temperature in the house cooled. When the temperature in the house cooled, the molecules slowed down. And because the molecules slowed down, the volume of the balloon shrunk. As soon as the volume shrank, that balloon stopped floating, and it fell down to the ground. And you ended up with a balloon that was sitting on the ground when you woke up the next morning. If you took that balloon and put it outside in the warm sun, it would expand and it would be able to float again. So gas laws, the beauty part about gas laws is they're everyday life situations. So as we can see, one more time, pressure, I'm sorry, volume and temperature are directly proportional. You heat up a gas, its volume is going to get bigger.